Quarantine, am I right? If you know me, you know that one, I can't just stand still and watch time pass me by. I'm always overthinking because that's my cardio. As you can kind of tell because I already put my foundation on, my skin has been through it. As much as I take care of it, I wash it, moisturize it, I exfoliate it, I do everything, but it's still, it's having its time. I've been playing with makeup, I don't know why, uh, knowing that I have nowhere to go and that I'm gonna be just like waiting for this to be over. Playing with makeup has been some sort of um, therapy. Me. But it, it wasn't until the other day that I got a DM, someone asking me to help uh, to date a vintage Margiela jacket that I fell into the vortex of um, the Margiela archives. I saw the makeup. I, I mean, I've always been somewhat conscious of the beauty looks because I'm a huge Inya Gronja makeup work. I've always known of the beautiful team that Martin and Inge, because it was quite groundbreaking and it was such a statement for each collection how the makeup really helped to make everything cohesive with the clothes and the shoes and the hair and the makeup. I decided, um, because I've been playing with makeup, I, I wanted to do something with it but I didn't really know the direction I wanted to take and that's when I realized recreating the Margiela Beauty Looks season to season a series. It's not gonna be in order because it's gonna be whatever I have available to to recreate the whole look. I mean, I don't have much of the vintage Margiela is stupidly overpriced, so I don't have the exact garments. My Margiela, my collection will continue. I'm waiting on a piece that is kind of the holy grail of my collection and it's it somehow the last update is Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. What is it doing there? What? I'm gonna make do with what I have. Yes, most of you, if you care, <laughs> don't have the exact things but we can have fun. I mean just do a little homage to the good old days and talk a bit of the collection I'm not gonna do an analysis, that's what Bliss Foster is for. If you don't know him, I mean, m most of you know him. Today, I have Spring Summer 1991. I mean, there's not a lot. Complete collection, runway photos, uh, I haven't found them. But we have the book, Margiela, the woman's collection. This is the book from the exhibition. Margiela Galliera and we have 1991 and there's some information here a couple of extra photos of the look the details the things for this collection they had this beauty look and that's what we're gonna try to do with my pretty little face it's a very elongated kind of Egyptian liner very thick in the description it says, she had fresh rose petals in her hair and heavily cold-lined eyes. She wore a long sleeveless denim, blah blah blah. We don't have just a long sleeveless denim. If you have it and you want to donate it to me, I will give you my address. And it says, a strong scent of patchouli followed the model. And they have the little patchouli bottle here. I was watching We Margiela. Oh, wait. I just received my We Margiela DVD and I think it was Vicky Darolitis who said um, wearing Margiela was like wearing patchouli in a room full of Chanel No. 5 and uh, because to stand out is not the most pleasant head turner it's a what the hell is she doing with her life which is gonna be amazing because I'm gonna wear this today and I have to go to the bakery to get me some almond croissants. Thank God they know I'm weird and also it's not really a big deal. But anyways, they still want, I, I, want, I, I know they question me in their heads. Anyways, so um, I found the, the correlation quite nice. So I'm gonna wear my most patchouli scented 
perfume, something Tom Ford, I'm sure. I think that's the most patchouli thing I own. We're gonna see. It's a big liner um, and no lipstick, right? Matte skin, because they didn't really embrace the glow. Um, white eyeshadow, what it looks like to be a white, uh, like very badly applied. Not really blended, not really shaped, just slapped on white eyeshadow and a very thick line on top, line on the bottom, and they connect in a square. It's not really a wing liner, no, it's like <clears throat> very Egyptian, I insist. And what it looks like to be a gloss. So, let's get into it. Okay, so, I have my foundation on, have my powder, it's the Chanel, the old version. If you care about makeup and the gossips behind. They changed the formula and now it has no talk. If you're sensitive to that, okay, but I think that talk helps it to be a bit softer. I'm not really gonna perfect my skin. I don't have concealer, I just have the glossier one. It's not really good for pimples, in my opinion. I just applied La Mer foundation. I hope that if this does have the Broth really helps my skin. I'm counting on you. Sheet was expensive. I'm gonna apply Le Mer Le Bon. I mean, if it was 91, there was not really a gloss. It probably was just a Le Bon. Brows. Did they care about their brows? I'm just gonna put some clear brow thing. Just want them to stick down to my face and not like they do, like they stand out that way. I don't have a black liner and I'm gonna need it for the next episode. I found this too but they're old so they're probably gonna be very dry and I don't have white eyeshadow, white matte eyeshadow. This is shimmery. Well, it looks shimmery. Does it really matter? Sloppy eyeshadow. There. I'm gonna put a white ish pressed powder on top so that it looks matte. You see, if you don't have the exact makeup products, that's the beauty of makeup artistry is that you can basically make do. Just make sure it's safe for the eyes or for the lips or for the skin. This is a Makeup Forever Aqua XL. Very teeny tiny. I need my reference. Thick line. Thick, thick line. Bottom. Very graphic. I've never done my makeup like this, which is interesting. Trying to forget all of the makeup techniques that I... Am I a Margiela model already? I have a question. Did they line the inside too? Because it was too... I need to be thicker on the upper side. So hard to recreate things like that. Anyways, in the meantime, let me get this perfected. What I wish to talk more about, but it's kind of hard to talk and... Is it weird that I feel kind of cute? I feel kind of cute, I don't know. I think I'm done with the makeup. I'm probably gonna just chisel a little bit my face structure because models in the 90s they were so skinny that you could see their cheekbones. I don't have those, so I'm gonna try to fake it till I make it. Um, and I know there are some models that have straight hair, but I always have straight hair. And I kind of want to, I mean, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this the whole way. In the exhibition, the three mannequins had big, fluffy, curly hair. Not quite like an afro, but in the book it says that many people thought because of the petals that it was like a Janis Joplin homage. It's neither confirmed or denied on the book. It could look cool, but boring natural hair, air dried. So I want, I want the drama. I'm in it to win it and I am prepared. It's gonna take a lot of time. So BRB. With hopefully a fluffy curly mane. And looking nothing like myself and more like a Margiela model.
I'm not gonna go through them. I'm gonna leave them packed right now because I really want to go eat. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I do not own anything from that collection. I'm sad to report that I don't. I was doing some secondhand browsing at a local, it's a big warehouse with a lot of new dead stock, but also, I don't know, it's, it's a weird shop. I found some gems there and I found this H&M Studio top. This H&M Studio top. It's a really beautiful piece. It was shown very differently in a very different concept, but I totally see the inspiration behind the Margiela 1991 tops and dresses. They were 1950s dresses and because they were so tight, because back then women were wore corsets and do extreme dieting. It was it was a weird time to live in. 1950s. If you want me to talk about fashion and eras and how that's my passion, people to talk about how fashion shaped society. I, I'm, that's, I, I love to talk about those kind of things. Martin found a bunch of those dresses and they dyed them in a grayish tone. That's why they are all like in that color scheme. That's why they were worn kind of open and not really, not really shaped to the body on top of jeans. So when I saw this at that secondhand shop or like dead stock, I don't know, it's a weird place. I found this from fall winter 2017. They were wearing them with blue jeans, like really old Levi-ish kind of vibes. And my favorite jeans, I ripped them. And I was planning on doing the photos with this, with my booty on display because I mean, there's no one. Um, outside. If we go to my one of my favorite collections which was the spring summer 1994. The previous nine collections just in the same color scheme to commemorate the five years of the Maison. I have this jean. There are some vintage Henry Lang jeans. I was planning on doing a much more in-depth uh, conversation about this collection but the truth is I don't really have much to say. So I will try to get some footage of me struggling to get the photo done and tomorrow I'll try to do uh, one of my favorites uh, yeah let's see if I can make it okay so I just fluffed the hair tried to add some petals so I just realized that I did everything wrong <laughs> I was missing something a very important Lashes. So I am friends with Inya Gronjard and Christina de Kovnik. Probably they will wonder why the hell do we have this weirdo on our friends list. I'm sorry. I'm a fan. <laughs> but anyway, so I saw this photo on um, Christina's uh, Facebook and of course Inya Gronjard was tagged. And I realized that I am missing some and of course, you, you can tell there in that photo that it's not eyeshadow like I have. It's more of a paint, white paint uh, on the lid. And there's some um, mascara on the lid. That's what we're gonna do to finish this beauty off. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a lip color of sorts because I feel kind of dead. And I don't like that. Tops, and I'm gonna add some... Oh. You see, I'm a makeup artist now. No, I am not. Voila. Should I do just one eye or should I do both? Decisions, decisions. I can take photos from one side and be like, oh, I've got my Cleopatra eyes. And then the other is like, this is Cleopatra's eyes. And the makeup artist was fired. The beauty of doing this kind of makeup today is that I don't care if it's messy, but then at the same time, I'm trying to perfect it. That's it. No, the lipstick. Okay, we're gonna go bougie with this Tom Ford lip shine something. Yeah, lip color shine in Quipper. This is the final look at more petals but you get the idea because I'm blind and I barely can see so I think I have to pull everything to the front ooh yes I feel like a brand new fucking person with this yes so um the top I'm not praising 
H&M for copying. I got it on second hand. It is kind of justified because I am not um, giving my money to H&M. Please forgive me. This vintage hang lang jeans that are so tight and my vintage tabbies. These jeans are so tight. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a bit entertaining. Help ourselves to just pass time and to entertain ourselves during this quarantine because shit is getting real. Bitch, I'm scared. But, you know, there's enough darkness. Thank you so much for watching and until the next one.